Now, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to suspect that maybe, just maybe, December is like private label airbrush appreciation month or something. Um, a few weeks ago, Paul from International Scale Modeler posted a review of a Mr. Hobby Pro Convoy airbrush. I forget the exact number. Um, but while he was doing his review, he had the instruction manual for essentially the identical um, Iwata airbrush on his bench. And it caused a lot of, hey, are these the same thing? Kind of uh, speculation and conversation. And they generally are, even though the Mr. Hobby had its own um, its own instruction manual that was branded GSI Creos, Mr. Hobby, all that good stuff. Um, you know, if you look at them, it's obvious they at least, if nothing else, share lineage and design. Either that or these two companies, both, you know, large presences in the Japanese hobby world, are ripping each other off and not suing each other somehow. So odds are, you know, there, there is a, a relationship of some kind going on between Awada and GSI, Mr. Hobby, Guns, whatever you want to call them. So that got rolling. Then uh, Paul, on, on his Ultimate Modeling product side, also released the Apex Airbrush, which, if you look at it and compare it with some of Badger's products, looks like it's borrowing um, from the Badger parts bin and essentially taking the Omni 4000 and mixing and matching it with some other pieces from other airbrushes to put out this uh, Apex Airbrush, which Badgers aren't really my thing, but if they were, and if I were in the market for a good you know, general workhorse airbrush, I would definitely consider this thing because it's priced great and the uh, Omni 4000 that it draws what looks like a lot of its elements from is a pretty solid airbrush. But, you know, I, I tend to prefer my, my uh, Iwatas and my small detail brushes and my favorite is my custom Micron, my CMB. So this thing sprays fantastically well. It's one of those things you think there's no way these can be um, these can be worth the money. There's no way that these are that much better than Iwata's other very good airbrushes or Harder and Steenbeck's very good airbrushes. Then you spray it and it's like, oh fuck, this is this is actually legit. Like it atomizes paint that much better than you know an Iwata HPC plus or something to that of that level. It's just a, it's it just says yeah that's nice. Here's how it's really done, and it's, you know it's almost like you know you're used to driving you know mid range nice ish cars and then you get in something that really knows how to move and it's just revelatory. It's kind of the same thing. And so I've been pretty addicted to this thing. And unless I'm literally priming, putting down clear coats, or have a reason that I need to go large for you know some sort of effect I'm after. This is pretty much my main airbrush. This does all of my paint work, you know. I like to paint small though, so there's that. Anyway, saw this thing and was poking around during all those, you know, is the guns Mr. Hobby airbrush really in a water discussion? And came across uh, this one called the PS770. And because I'm such an airbrush whore, I bought one. Now, I don't think this is a one-for-one -for -one clone of a custom Micron. I mean, there are plenty of different, you know, granted this is a CMB, this would be more of like the CMC Plus or whatever the one is that has the, you know, the Mac valve here on the bottom. But, you know, just looking at them here, you can see this one has sort of like a creamy metal finish. This one has the nice polished metal look. Um, you know, they don't have, this one has the uh, the trigger adjustment screw, this one doesn't. There are a few things like that. Um, but they seem pretty similar in a lot of other aspects. And so what I'm gonna do is put them against each other and see just how much this uh, PS770 Guns Mr. Hobby Mr. Airbrush Airbrush is actually a uh, you know relative of sorts of the custom micron because if it is I picked this sucker up for 250 bucks on eBay um, shipped from Japan got here in a week custom microns good luck finding a custom micron for anywhere near 250 these days um, I actually got this one for around that but it was also used so 
you know, if you're willing to go for used, go for it. I mean, there's always, you know, there's always a uh, risk there that you'll get one that, you know, the, the seller says is gently used and it's actually been beat to shit and had like tar pouring through it and things like that. But, you know, if you get, if you luck out, these are great. If you can't, and if you don't want to drop five, $600 on a custom Micron, is this an option? Let's find out. Okay, so let's take a look at these two airbrushes side by side. Up here we've got the Awada Custom Micron. Right here we've got the Guns PS770. Now, it's immediately apparent that these both have some family resemblance and lack some family resemblance. I mean, you can see the similar shape of the air channel here. This is where the air comes in from the airline and gets up in here to the spray head to atomize the paint. Other than that, I mean, they've got typical airbrush features, paint cup, wow, trigger, wow, back handle, wow. You know, there, there are enough differences here that these are definitely not the same body. Um, there's, you know, this little inset thing here that I don't know what on earth that's for, honestly, except to maybe catch paint that you spill out of the paint cup. But there are enough differences that this is very clearly not just a custom Micron that has been stamped with uh, GSI Creos. I mean, this is a different body design, different body finish. You know, you can see the, the creaminess of the metal here versus this highly polished specimen of beauty. So if you're hoping for essentially the exact same thing as a, as a custom Micron down to every last detail, this is not it. I mean, let's look at, you know, minor things here. The trigger, this one has these knurled edges. The upper texture is different. The, this one has what looks like, honest to God, lightning holes in the middle of it, which you know, every ounce counts, I guess. Um, the, the pitch of them seem to be slightly different. This one seems to be angled slightly more forward. The custom Micron has a tension adjustment screw here. You screw this, you know, in or out to change how taut the trigger pull is, which is an awesome feature and every airbrush should have. This one has this stupid window that, you know, is, is nice to, I guess, clean out the needle, but it's not big enough to really get anything in there to clean it effectively. So it's more just a window just for the for shits and giggles. Both of them have a needle stop. The needle stops have different designs. Um, needle stops, in my opinion, are useless. So, you know, whatever, they're there. One thing that does set this guy apart from this particular custom Micron is the Mac valve up front. Some of the other custom Microns, I believe it's the CMC plus and CMB plus and things like that, do have a Mac valve up front. Um, they are even more expensive than the regular custom Microns. Now, what the fuck does a Mac valve do? Well, that's really probably a better discussion for another time, but essentially what they do is they change the total airflow coming through the airbrush. They don't change the pressure. So think of it this way. Think of you have a hallway and you have a bunch of dogs running down the hallway and they're all running at 40 miles an hour. These are some really fast ass dogs. Now, the hallway is wide open, you know, you've got all these dogs running through, you know, say 100 dogs running through at 40 miles an hour, and they're all picking up tennis balls and just bolting out the other side. Well, if you slow them down to 20 miles an hour, but you still keep the same amount of dogs running through, that is essentially what happens when you change the PSI on the regulator. When you adjust the MAC valve, what you're doing is you're essentially shutting the door into that hallway. So <clears throat> the dogs you have running through are still running through at 40 miles an hour, but instead of 100, maybe you only have 30, maybe you only have 10. And what happens when you have those fewer dogs running through, if we think of this in terms of air, the paint in the cup gets pulled through the needle with the Venturi effect, grabs onto those air molecules, gets atomized, spits out. So when you have less air less actual air flowing through this thing, the paint tends to glom onto the air molecules a bit more and you get essentially a fatter spray pattern. So you get this like dotting effect that isn't particularly useful for most things, but if you want to do some sort, you know, some weathering overlays and things like that, it's actually fantastic to be able to access. So 
honestly, I've already got a Mac valve on my airline, and if I want to use it, I just use this damn thing. So this is extraneous, and in my opinion, it is going to be a great thing for, you know, as you can see here, every now and then paint tends to slosh out of the cup, and where does it go? Right to the bottom of the airbrush, which is right where this thing is. So I look forward to cleaning this a lot. Now, what else have we got with these airbrushes? Well, this fucking thing. Um, I guess it's better than some of the other connectors I've seen that have that old school just like shove a nylon tube onto it and hope for the best. But still, yeah, screw that. Quick connects. Quick connects are the way to go. You can get these on Amazon for dirt cheap. Um, even the these are Grex ones. I, I tend to, you know, like to keep everything together, and these are, I think, like 10 bucks each, maybe. But take these, take your GMAC, love that name, and just boom, then all of a sudden, you've got air. Want to swap? Do that. Put it on another airbrush. Well worth the investment. Okay, so those are the basics of the airbrushes. Now, one thing that will tell me if these are more than just vaguely um, similar airbrushes and if they actually do share some internal lineage is to actually start opening them up. So what I'm going to do is take the needle out of this guy so that I can access the spray head because the spray head on a custom Micron is essentially its secret weapon. You know, it's like the engine in a uh, Subaru STI or one of those cars that's otherwise a piece of shit until they put a great engine in it. Same basic principle applies to the custom Micron. And I honestly don't know why the fuck I'm taking this apart because I've got a spare um, spray head that I bought when I thought this one was fucked. So give me one moment to get this guy back together, because what the fuck am I doing? Okay. So as you notice here, this thing has a much longer snout, I would say, than most other airbrushes. Um, for example, here is an Awada HPC Plus. You know, this thing is much more, much more tapered, much more narrowed down. You know, I'll laugh at the uh, huge snout on the Grex XGI. And for shits and giggles, we've got this Olympus HP, HP62B, which is basically the same thing as an Iwata um, HPB from back in the day. Again, the uh, PS770 much, much more resembles the nose of a custom Micron. Now, I know that on mine, I've taken the cap off, so, you know, things look a little bit different. But what do they look like with the cap on? They look, sorry, with the focusing fun here, they look like that. Um, that is pretty damn similar, if you ask me. And if you actually line these up, Right, this thing does not want to sit still. And there's not a lot of places to grasp. But, I mean, that is pretty damn close. You know, the, these knurled edges up front line up almost exactly with that. The main difference is that back here you've got this knurled edge for the main spray head thread. And this guy has the uh, good old sort of hex thing that you use a wrench with. So we're going to see, see if I can actually... Yeah, that's going to take a wrench. Huh. That's not going to help us. All right, so here we have... That is the actual nozzle. Let's break it. So let's compare that to the Iwata when you do the same thing.
This Mac valve makes it hard to put these two together. All right, come back. So looking at these, um, in my opinion, the spray head design and everything here forward looks pretty freaking close. And one fun thing that we can try here, see what happens when we try to put the nozzle, the nozzle cap from the water onto this guy. Look at that. That is a perfect fit. Now let's try the other way around. What happens when we go to put the gun's nozzle cap on the custom Micron? Hey, look at that. So see this right here, the same or very, very highly similar nozzle design leads me to believe that these are not the same airbrush, but definitely utilizing the same design and probably more a product of badge engineering. So you know how, for example, all Acuras are basically um, start their life as Hondas. You know, the Acura MDX is a Honda Pilot with nicer seats and fake wood and things like that. Same basic principle, I think, applies here. This is, for lack of a better term, a custom Micron. You know, it has essentially an identical head design, even if the body looks different. And that head design is where the magic happens. Got the same... Needle size 0.18 millimeters. And everything inside the body seems pretty damn identical. Um, different materials perhaps being used, which could be telling. But, you know, I'm prepared to say this is very, very, very derivative of a custom Micron, if nothing else. Now the question is, does it spray like a custom Micron? Okay, so for the spray test, we're gonna be using Fly's Hawker Hurricane, which I built earlier this year for a build review. And it, as you can see, it has since become something of a paint mule. And we're gonna be spraying Mr. Paint's uh, take on non-chromate epoxy primer. This is basically the color that you see on modern U.S. aircraft, F-22, things like that. Um, I have to laugh because primers always seem to be just the silliest ass colors out there. But, you know, I don't use it all that much, and so it's a good option here. Plus, it'll show up nicely against this blue. So, a little bit more professional shaking. And look at that color looks like mint. Don't drink it. All right, get a little bit of paint. We're going to do the uh, custom micron first to establish a nice baseline. And then we'll see how the PS770 compares against it. Crank down the pressure here. All right, here we go. I love how small this custom micron can go. I have to apologize for my compressor, it likes to talk. So, there's a little bit of paint work with the uh, custom Micron. Nice. Now, let's see how the PS770 stacks up. 
Okay, so now it's time to give the PS770 its shot. So, get a bit more of the uh, mint here. Load this stuff in. Make sure we've got spraying going on. Now, that was interesting. This thing seems to like a higher PSI than custom micron. And because I am a terrible person, I'm going to remove the needle cap because it's hard to see what's going on. Here we go with the PS770. Come on. That is not bad. Um, it's definitely in the same league as you can see up here with the custom Micron in terms of spraying. Let's see how it does on some slightly broader work like I would typically do with black basing. So. When I'm doing a marble coat, I like to be a bit more diffuse than that right up against the plastic super fine line. You know, being small matters, but if you're too defined, it can make you work to cover it up so much that you obliterate everything you're going at, going for. So, go for more of something like this, and step back and blend it. The color of this light going up against blue, even with Mr. Paint with its nice sort of linear coverage buildup, it's going to take a little bit of time. But as you can see, this thing is doing a great job with it. Let's do a few more super fine lines here. Oh, that is nice. One thing the custom Micron does amazingly well is atomize paint so that you can paint this small all day long with really good spray properties. And this thing does it too. So, fucking sweet. Now, let's see what stippling does. Let's bring in the MAC valve here. All right. So this is a terrible color to do this with. Um, whenever I use stippling, I tend to use more of grays and browns and things like that for weathering effect. But just so you can see how this works when you crank that MAC valve in, you get more of this spattering kind of pattern. One thing I like to use this for with black basing is to get this sort of randomized pattern going Because then when you come back over it and blend it, you've already got sort of a diffuse pattern going on. And this thing is reflecting light in silly ways. So as you can see here, you've got this sort of speckled pattern. And when you come in and lay over, you know, lay a blending coat on top of it,
it carries that sort of random patchiness through pretty well. And this thing I've been using a lot on my Tomcat build to get that sort of dirty, grimy look going and keeping it nice and random. Uh, you know, if you go too far and blend in like I'm doing right now, you definitely lose some of it. But as you can see, it's holding it in quite nicely down here. Now, ideally, if you want to use stippling for this kind of thing, it's best to do, you know, a marble coat of your main color first and then come in with a different color for the stippling and then come back in with a blending coat. But that's kind of beyond the purview of what we're doing here, so. You know, it still does super fine. You know, spray the seat belt on your ejection seat type of work. Even at this cranked PSI, which I should probably turn it back down now that I've released it from its uh, Mac valve duty. Give me some spray. There we go. But yeah, <laughs> this thing is uh, is pretty fucking sweet. So I'm going to clean it up and then I will be back to wrap up with final thoughts. All right, so after taking a deeper look at the PS770 and doing a few spray tests with it, um, what do I think? Well, I mean, honestly, I think that the, you know, the spray work here speaks for itself. Um, obviously, it wasn't going for anything super precise, but you can see that when it comes to churning out the paint, it is every bit as good as the custom Micron. Now, that doesn't mean I necessarily think it's its equal. Um, one thing I noticed with this sucker while spraying it is it is heavy. Um, I, you know, I'd have to find some sort of uh, scale to weigh these guys, but I would say this thing is probably at least 30% heavier than the Custom Micron. Uh, it also, due to its larger size, you can see here it's, you know, it is the longer airbrush. It is bulkier. Um, Honestly, it feels better in my hand. I'm so used to this guy that I'm kind of, you know, I'm okay here, but you know, it's it's a bit more hand crampy because you have to kind of knurl your finger over the trigger. Whereas this one, you can see there's just so much more space to work in. You know, you're not getting all craggy fingered like this up on top of it. So it feels great in the hand, except for how fucking heavy it is. Um, but when it comes to putting out the paint, it feels and sprays like a custom Micron. And, I ha I'll, you know, I have, to cons I have to conclude without being able to really tear into the spray head and look at it closely and see if it, you know, if it matches the, you know, what this end piece of the custom Micron spray head looks like without busting out a wrench and ripping this thing off and taking a look at it. Um, so far, I, I have to assume, based on you know the, the nozzle cap fitting exactly on and being interchangeable between them, that this thing is basically a custom Micron that doesn't quite look like a custom Micron. Um, earlier today, I made the comparison to, you know, imagine if you found out that Audi uh, was selling a car that was basically a 911 Turbo, but for $45,000. You know, it doesn't quite look like a Porsche, um, it, but it's got the same engine, it's got the same drivetrain, it's got the same suspension setup, this, you know, all that for 45 grand versus, you know, the 70, 80, 90, whatever the hell 911 turbos go for nowadays. Um, that is what this thing strikes me as. It's, you know, obviously not as polished up as this. It's missing a few really nice touches like the, uh, like the trigger tensioner there. But when it comes to spraying, this thing is every bit as good as the custom Micron. So if you're looking for, you know, what is in my opinion, the best possible experience you can get out of airbrushing and you don't want to spend, 
you know, four, five, six hundred dollars to get one of these guys and don't want to risk and, you know, deal with the, uh, the sheer chance of finding one used, pick up a, uh, a Mr. Hobby, <laughs> Mr. Airbrush PS770, because this thing, you know, for the two, you know, 210, 250, it's, it's available in that price range online, um, shipped in that price range, I don't think you're going to find anything close to this good. So, yeah, I mean, this thing, you know, we we, uh, we joke about reviews always ending in highly recommended uh, when it's really not warranted, but in this case, I'm going to say this thing is highly fucking recommended. Um, if you don't already have a custom Micron and you've been drooling over one, get one of these fuckers, because holy shit, um, I am definitely impressed with it, and it... <laughs> It has earned a coveted spot on my airbrush holder, and it's probably going to be relegating something else to the spare drawer where the uh, the airbrushes of yesteryear go to languish. So that's it, and I am going to stop procrastinating now and get back to my Tomcat. So thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, later.